Hey y'all, it's me again and I'm back with this time what is an emergency because it's an emergency fragrance review because I just got these and I'm really excited about them because it's sort of like my first foray into sort of more like an indie space from the niche that I've been actually delving into over the past few years. To say that you've probably heard of these houses, probably not. I'd take a guess and say that you probably haven't heard of these houses. I guess we're going a little bit around the world towards Europe and Scandinavia. I think I've got like five fragrances here that we're going to talk about. I've got three that I know of and that I've worn on skin and two that I've waited up until this video to open up up and test and let's see where they're from and I know they're all sort of going to be indie or very small niche houses and I'm wondering what they're going to smell like now I know the first three and I've got my stuff ready got my testers ready I have a pen let's begin so we're going to begin with the first house let's call it that and this is the house of Theodorus Calotinis and if you didn't guess by the name and this is the boxes here uh, this guy's Greek. It's a very Greek name. So I got two perfumes from Theodorus Kalotinis, and one of them is called Mentor. That's the one we're gonna try first. I'm gonna try that first. Give it a little unboxing. The packaging isn't all that great. It is a smaller house, and so it's forgivable. And this is what the bottle itself looks like. Focus on the bottle, please, camera. Thank you so much. This is Mentor. And I'm not going to, like I said, I'm not going to talk about packaging unless it, they've gone to a particular amount of effort, which in this case they haven't. It's just a very standard, standard packaging. The juice inside, this one is weird. Let me just, atomize is good. Yeah, this one's weird. This one's weird. This one's weird because it's supposed to be a vanillic aromatic sort of scent. There's only three notes listed. That's vetiver, vanilla, and amber. All of these I like, except maybe the vanilla. Depends on what kind of vanilla it is. But the vanilla in here is not, it's not your mainstream vanilla. It's not the kind of vanilla that people have been using in the mainstream fragrances, making things super sweet. It's also not the old school vintage vanilla like the dirty balsamic sort of vanilla it's more in line with like an edible vanilla this is not a gourmand though in terms of the vetiver that's supposed to be in here it's it's not it's not like your earthy sort of vetiver it's not like your the ones that you know the vetiver fragrances that you have that sort of play with the citruses and amp up sort of the gingery sort of grassy more qualities of the vetiver it's not that either it's something completely different i can't really put my finger on it but it really does remind me of cashmerin for some reason all of these things put together the vetiver the vanilla and the fantasy amber it really just reminds me of sort of like a cashmere wood or cashmerin kind of note like i said it's really strange it's hard to put into words exactly what this is like i'm trying though i'm trying hold on hold on it'll come to me is it pleasant yes it's pleasant it's is it clean it's very clean there's there's really not much challenging going on in here is it niche it's very niche because i don't like i said i've not i'm not really smelled anything like this very different very different theo you got me scratching my head here. Mm. And I think it's not until sort of the late dry down where you can really detect more vanilla clearly. It feels like everything's just consolidated in here to make a smell, a particular smell. You know, some fragrances you can you can smell and you can detect. Yes, this is this note. This is that note. This is this accord. This is that accord here. I get nothing. I get I get us. I get a scent and it's a block of scent kind of like a mentor you know you look at a mentor as someone who is older more experienced someone who's someone who's done the thing that they're mentoring you about that's why they're mentors and that you look up to and if they were wearing this you might question your choices because it would introduce an element of mystery to your mentor to someone who you thought you knew it's basically a surprise. It's like the professor with a secret. Mm. All right, we'll note that down. We'll come back to it in the dry down. Mentor was the first one from Theodorus Kalotinis. Drink break. Ah, water is lovely. There is ice in there, so there is water in there. But mostly it's Kalua milk, if you're wondering. I don't usually drink. This is like an occasion. Anyway, the next one I'm going to show you is, again, by Theodorus Kalotinis. This one is called Tobacco maniac and it kind of looks like this it's a different bottle it's a different bottle because this is an x-ray 
de parfum, whereas the mentor was an eau de parfum. This is an extra de parfum. Most of the time I find with extras that, you know, the higher the concentration you go with fragrances, the longer they last. Obviously there's more fragrance oils within the composition. So it is expected that they would last longer. So the longevity is better. However, I find the projection becomes more and more like a skin scent or wears more closer to the skin than your regular eau de toilette. And the reason, correct me if I'm wrong, is because the thing that makes it jump off your skin and project is the fact that there is more alcohol content in the eau de toilette as opposed to an eau de parfum or an extra de parfum. And that's the thing that evaporates and helps the projection along. So this, I don't know how it's done because it projects like a beast and I wore it, I gave it a full wearing and it lasts for a very long time and on clothes even more. If you manage to get some on your clothes, what does it smell like? Let's give it a bit of a spray. Beautiful atomizer. Is that, is that visible when I do that? Let's do that again. Yeah. Wow. Maybe I did too many. Maybe I did too many sprays, but who cares? Wow. Oh my God, that was too many sprays. Insane. This is insane. And I think the, the name is appropriate. I think the name is really appropriate, as a matter of fact, because it is tobacco. It's a tobacco fragrance for a maniac. Tobacco maniac. Someone who is a maniac for tobacco and chocolate. That's probably coming from the patchouli that's in here. Man, it's like a, it's really like an edible chocolate that's in the background here. The tobacco is, is prominent. It tells you that, hey, I'm a tobacco fragrance. It's pipe tobacco, no, not pipe tobacco. This is a cigar. This is a cigar. This is a fine Cuban cigar. This is what this is. And I'll never forget this smell because, because the first time that I smoked a cigar was actually a very fine Cuban cigar. I think it was called, uh, okay, I had a few. My uncle's friend ran a business importing cigars from Cuba. We're not in, I'm not in the United States, so that's absolutely fine. Uh, it was sort of the mid night, no, the late nineties. And he brought me a bunch. And in that bunch, there was a few in this metal canister called Romeo e Giulietta. And there was another one called Cohiba. They were big long one of those big long motherfuckers i thought that i'd be cool and that i would smoke these cigars and i did not know how to smoke cigars <laughs> first of all i didn't know that you needed to use the cedar the slice the sliver of cedar wood that came in the tin to actually light up your cigar with that i didn't know i cut my finger using the cigar cutter as well i wasn't able to smoke the whole thing in one night which i wouldn't recommend smoking an entire cigar that big in one night, especially if you've been drinking as well. That's what this is taking me back to. Chocolate, once it fades, you're left with this extremely realistic tobacco smell. It's it's amazing. And if you're a lover of tobacco, this is it. It's like I said, it's, it's a tobacco fragrance for a maniac. If you're a maniac for tobacco, this is the one. Damn, you would dress this up. That's what you'd do. I don't see this as a casual wear. No way. It's too much. It's it's like it's like one of those hyper realistic sort of paintings where you look at it and you're like, is that a photo? It's not a photo. Someone painted it. It's like this. I smell the actual, you know, and there's ash or either that or my nose is being tricked, but there is it's like it's like it's like it's like this. Hold on. It's like this. It's you it's a fresh cigar, but there's remnants of it having been smoked before because i do get some elements of, of ash in here it's it's been lit up it's been something's been burned as well it's amazing it's really good actually and like i said it lasts forever so that was tobacco maniac i'm gonna come back uh to tobacco maniac that's two from theodorus calatinus and that's from greece so we went to greece and so from greece we're gonna go to norway to a house called i don't even know how to pronounce this but I'm going to try my best. It's called Son Venin, right? That's what it says, but there's like two dots on the eye. So I don't know how that's supposed to be pronounced, but it's Son Venin and the fragrance's name is 0905, which would either be the 9th of May or the, the 5th of September. 
Uh, I don't know if in Norway they do day, day, month, month, or month, month, day, day. Made in Norway, blended in France. Okay, presentation on this is a little better. They've gone to a little bit more effort. Sturdy little box. And the bottle itself looks like this. That's the uh, cap there as well. I'd say it doesn't look as good in pictures as it does holding it. Like it's actually really nice in the hand, quality glass. The cap is really solid metal and hefty. And this I've worn a number of times now. And that's because I really like it. By the way, these were all blind buys. I've never smelled these before. So yeah, you're welcome. Do we do this? Okay. Atomizer is not that not as good as the atomizers of Theodorus Calotinis bottles, but that scent is amazing. Mmm, this is good. It's very spicy. Very spicy, but not in the way that you're thinking. It's a bright spice. It's it's a it's a bright, herbaceous, spicy uplifting, energetic fragrance, but energetic and cold, if I could say that at the same time. Starts off with uh, ginger and cardamom, apparently. But what I smell is sage, definitely. Lots of sage in here in the top. That's what really gets your attention. And there's this lavender in the mid, pine sap and leather, and then it sort of apparently dries down to amber, cedar wood and dry woods. I get none of these, I just get sage and some supporting players. Sage and maybe a little bit of ginger as well because that brightness is coming from the ginger, the herbaceousness and like the, the spiciness. The sage is herbaceous and spicy at the same time. And it, this so reminds me of something. When I, when I first smelled it, I'm like, huh, this really kind of reminds me a little bit of Low Blue Disse by Isamiyaki. And of course, it's a much more complicated or complex fragrance than that one is. That one I hold in high regard because it's a it's a cheapie. It's like a really good cheapie. I've put it on my cheapies lists before. Like for 20 bucks, you'd be hard pressed to find a better fragrance that you could possibly wear in the outdoors. That's also safe for modern noses. This one is a more complicated version of that. But, but, not to say that this is expensive. And I have to say, I have to caveat this and say, usually like my niche purchases and things like that are off the charts expensive for most people. But these indie fragrances were not expensive at all. As a matter of fact, they were cheaper than some of the designer fragrances, like the prices that you would pay for designer fragrances at a discounter. And so it's hard not to pull the trigger on things like this, especially when you're curious about, you know, the, the fragrance itself and the note listing uh, appeals to you and the reviews sort of whet your appetite as well. I got this 0905 because on Fragrantica, they say that it smells like Yves Saint Laurent's Loam, which I absolutely love and would love a niche interpretation or an indie interpretation of that fragrance. It smells nothing like loam. Just because it's got ginger in it and some woods doesn't mean that it's going to smell like loam, but it does smell really good. Now, the couple of times that I've worn this, it's the longevity on it hasn't really been the greatest. So on Venon, I'm cutting you some slack because I figure maybe I should let some air into the bottle, let it sort of mature and macerate in the bottle. It might develop a little bit more. It might get stronger, etc., etc. So I'll keep my nose on this and report back, I guess, which I never do anyway. So I'm not going to do that anyway. I, I shouldn't really promise shit I, sh I won't do. I probably won't. I'll probably do it by myself and go, hey, you know what, I should really record this, but then it's too much effort. Anyway, let me write that down, 0905, I like that one. So we went to Greece and then we went to Norway and now we're going to go to my mystery envelope, mystery envelope, open up the mystery envelope. I, I, I did feel that there was more than one sample in here. Go away, mystery envelope, where are you from? Who is this? This is Samuel Gravan. Samuel Gravan. All right, let's let's have a look for Samuel Gravan. Samuel Gravan. Artisanal botanical perfumes. Okay, made by hand in Australia. Okay, all right. Local product. All right, I'm liking this. Okay, so far I have two. I have one called Amiris or Amiris. I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's Amiris. 
And then the next one is called Woody Fig. Ooh, fig fragrance. Okay, I really like fig fragrances. Let's start with, let's start with Amiris. Now these ones I haven't worn on skin, obviously. I just opened the envelope. I don't even, I've never even heard of this house before. I call it a house, but it's just a dude. Hello, Samuel, how are you? Okay, let's go here like that. Amiris, mm, ooh, zingy. That's, that's a different citrus. What is it? What are the notes? What, what are the notes, mate? G'day, mate. Amiris, here we go. Ingredients. Ingredients. Organic sugar cane. Okay, no, wait, hold on. Uh, I'm not looking at ingredients. I'm looking at notes. Here we go. Pink grapefruit. That's the one I smelled. Lime, pink grapefruit, and sweet lime. Oh, that's lovely. That's really nice. Cardamom in the mid. Jasmine, Neroli, Raven, Ravensara. I don't know what that is. And Cypress. And in the base, we have Benzone, Frankincense, Oak Moss, Amiris, Cedarwood, and Sandalwood. Interesting. I really like this. Mmm, that's really good. Um, I don't smell too much Amiris because I've smelled Amiris before. Amiris, Amiris tomato tomato maybe it'll come through in the base which usually takes a bit longer on these little tester strips which are not my skin i should really put these on skin too and i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that i'm not wearing anything here so oh if you go onto my skin amiris on my right hand mm. oh that's lovely man that's really good that's really nice amiris here let's find out a bit more about this guy Samuel Gravan. I'm just looking through his website now. Um, I didn't get sent these by Samuel Gravan or the house or anybody else. I bought fragrances and from a from a fragrance shop online. And when you buy stuff, they send you. Of course, you know you, the websites. They send you like little samples of other fragrances that you might never try or never get to try. So this is really good. They've they've done well with this one. Um, Self-taught botanical perfumer. Created perfume since 2010. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Skills developed. 100% natural perfumes. Okay. Oh, no. 100% natural perfumes do not have the sillage or the longevity of their synthetic counterparts. I'm very sensitive to synthetics. Use a very small amount of synthetics, 3 to 4%, just enough to amplify the perfume so it lasts longer on the skin. And the perfumes are composed of 25 to 35% of essential oil content. Right. So it's so if you're looking for a natural perfume, almost all of it is natural. It looks like if it's only three to four percent, that's synthetics, which is just to amplify the performance, the longevity, the projection. That's gorgeous, dude. What the? It's really bouncing off my skin, man. That citrus is just just awesome. I love this. I love this one. Damn you. Why would you? Why would they send me this? They, they know me. Okay. They might know me. Okay. All right. Cool. I see what you've done there. All right. So there you go. It's an Aussie natural perfumer. And uh, yeah, with a minute amount of synthetics in there with a high concentration of perfume oils. I kind of like this. One more thing I should caveat is like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to title or subtitle this video as cheap cheapy niche cheapy niche fragrances because i think that might get a few more clicks because when people see niche or they see indie it's like oh it's gonna be some stuff that i've never heard of and i can't get anywhere or it's gonna be some stuff that's super expensive but these aren't like i mentioned before these are these are these are less than i picked these up the, the bottles the full bottles i picked these up less than what you would pay for a, a designer fragrance from a discounter technically so it's a pretty good deal for for people who have have gone through the designer journey have gone through the cheapy journey have gone to the niche journey the big niche house journey and have started to delve in and and, and sort of become sort of a little bit jaded can i say that can i say jaded when they look at the prices and they look at like and they smell some of these fragrances and they're like you gotta be pulling my leg buddy because there's no way that you should be charging that much money and it's all relative it's all up to the it's in the eye of the beholder or it's in the it's in the 
wallet of the beholder or something, whatever it is. But sometimes you think you're taking the piss because this is this is in no way worth that at all because there's much better stuff at lower price points. But then everyone's free to price their fragrances however they want. I'm not a, I'm not a pricing expert. I am, but I'm not going to go into it in this video. OK, and the next one that we're going to check out again from Samuel Gravan is Woody Fig. And I'm going to bring up I'm going to bring up this and the concentrations on these is it's an eau de parfum. So um, Amiris is an eau de parfum and so is Woody Fig. It's an eau de parfum as well. All right. I'm going to spray it on the actual strip like this. Man, what? First of all, I love fig fragrances. End of story. I grew up around fig trees. I'm from the Mediterranean. Summertime. Figs are always in bloom. Even here in Australia, everywhere we've been, my dad's planted a fig tree. We've always had figs abundant during the summertime and just something about figs. I used to play with figs when I was younger and I'll go into it in more detail in a video that I'm, I'm, I'm planning on doing with regards to uh, a particular fig fragrance that I really enjoy. So this is Woody, Woody Woodpecker, Woody Pig, Woody Fig. Okay, okay, so I sprayed that on my hand. I sprayed Woody Fig on my hand. And the thing I'm smelling at the top right away is Yuzu because there's Yuzu in here. There's Basil, Lemon, Mandarin, Clementine, Yuzu and Fig. And I'm smelling Yuzu and I'm smelling the rind of lemon. So it's not really, really lemony lemon. It's the white bit underneath the yellow skin that bit it's, it's like the the almost bitter sort of part of the le bittery lemon but like the pop of yuzu great and there's fig in here it's not the fruit not the fruit of the fig i'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking when you cut fig wood it's a woody fig. well it's a woody fig that's the name of the fragrance it's a woody fig anyway middle notes a siberian fur as in not an animal fur as in the fur the the tree fur fur tree uh bergamot in the mid which okay yeah, that's pretty weird black pepper cardamom and the base notes of cedar um, amiris again sandalwood rosewood and benzon get a little bergamot as well on the strip it's still really popping from the top notes and yeah it's it's almost if it's if you mulched the branch of a fig tree freshly cut and and mixed it with some citruses like clementine and mandarin and lemon and yuzu and bergamot and that's what it is and i think that the bass notes all they're kind of doing is just supporting the show in the mid and in the top that's what they're doing loving them loving them both fantastic as a matter of fact i wonder how much this costs <laughs> don't do shopping now come on how much is this 90 bucks oh it's a 30 mil okay well a 30 mil 90 bucks from the website not bad not bad for like a, okay, I guess if you are sensitive, if your skin is kind of sensitive or hypersensitive to synthetic, well, actually it shouldn't be hypersensitive to synthetics because the synthetics are the ones that have the natural, ir have the irritants of the natural fra fragrance oils removed. There's the whole reason why Ifra started clamping down on fragrance uh, fragrances or fragrance ingredients is well I, I guess you could you could have many sort of hypotheses but the thing that they tout is that the reason why they 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 clamp down with their recommendations because it's not a it's not a law it's not a governing body is because of the natural ingredients that have irritants in them and they cause irritation to some people's skin. In these days where people apply a lot more cosmetics than they used to, uh, even men as well, the amount of these fragrance oils, because even your cosmetic products have fragrances in them. And those fragrances, if they're containing natural ingredients, and then you apply something else that has natural uh, fragrance oils in them, and then you apply a fragrance which also has that in them, that is cumulative on your skin. And so you might be okay with the first few things that you apply, but it might be that you apply the fragrance and that's the thing that tips your skin over the edge and makes you break out or something like that. So that's why they're clamping down. And that's why companies like the big chemical companies would come up with you know, the molecules or the fragrance 
or the synthetic versions of these natural fragrances, which have the, I guess, the irritants of the naturals removed. I don't know how it works with regards to, you know, these this house, a Samuel Gravan or however he works. So it could be that these naturals, botanical naturals or something, or there's some process by which you extract the, uh, the fragrance oils that ensure that you have uh, less chance of being irritated. And so, yeah, there you go. So if you're looking for something natural, that's something natural and Aussie, phenomenal, loving it. I like this one too, man, this is like, they're both unisex as well. Nice. I like this is like a cool summertime cocktail sort of thing. Lovely. Spring autumn for woody fig. Woody fig, spring autumn. Amiris, I'd say you could do this in hot weather. So like a, almost like a an all year round fragrance. Oh man. Okay, coming back to these fragrances because I guess by now we've given it enough time so that the top notes have faded off those tester strips and we're getting into the mids and the base, right? Um, especially the ones that I sprayed on my skin as well. So we're going to go back and check out the first one that we tried, which was from Theodorus Calotinus. Theodorus Calotinus. And this was Mentor. It's nice. It's got like a bit of a fluffy sort of cotton woolly kind of thing going on there. But again, it's indescribable uh, other than those ridiculous words that I'm using to describe it. Like, you know, cotton wool, clean laundry, maybe. That's that's why. But it's, it's, it's a weird one. I like it. I'm still on the fence. I don't love it. I like it. Okay, the next one was Tobacco mania which i went crazy about but mm, okay so the chocolatiness has sort of faded now and you totally get a honeyed tobacco but not 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 super honey not indolic honey it's just there in the back to give you the impression of a freaking nice cigar and the patchouli has now become less chocolatey and more sort of earthy. Like I said, the chocolate is sort of faded. Super nice, super nice and and quite formal in its presentation. Very nice, Tobacco Maniac. This one is the Gold 0905 by Son Venin. Hasn't changed. Quite linear then, I would say. Uh, maybe the fizziness of the ginger at the top has sort of faded, but it's still all about that herbaceous, spicy, zingy, spicy, herbaceous sage, basically. All right. And the last two were from Samuel Gravan, and uh, I've got them on tester strips. I've also got them on my hands. So let's go with Woody Fig on the tester strip. Very clean, very clean Woody Fig. I'm trying to find another way of saying it, but I can't because it's literally Woody Fig. It's fig wood. Yeah, the yuzu's sort of, all the citruses are gone. Now we're left with woody fig. Like I said, it's not the fruit. It's not even a, an unripened fruit. It's it's not even the leaf. It is the stems, the branches, not the stems, the branches, the branches of the fig tree. That's what they are. But on my skin, I'm still getting some citrus which is odd. I'm still getting lemon and yuzu in here. Sick. That's nice. It's the first time ever that on my skin, the top notes hung around longer than they did on a tester strip. That's amazing. That's amazing. Really like that. And the next one and the last one, I should say, is Amiris. Oh man. This now smells like a flavor of ice cream I used to eat when I was a kid. <sighs> Is mastic or something like this? Uh, is Amiris related to mastic or lentisk or something like this? Because where I grew up, there's a type of ice cream called Booza. I love Booza. It's a special kind of ice cream. And the ones who make it Im immensely well are situated in, in Lebanon. And I've had Booza here. It's not the same. It's just because probably the kind of ingredients that are being used they don't come from the same place and this totally smells like one of the flavors of ice cream one of the flavors of booza nice okay what does it smell like on my skin a more muted version of what was on the tester strip which is expected mm, lovely 
absolutely lovely ah now this is a bit of a challenge but uh, yeah i think i think i've done well with these these have been really good i'm going to give uh the samuel gravans a full wearing before sort of deciding to maybe pull the trigger on those as well uh, i don't know it becomes difficult so many good fragrances from houses that never heard of before went from like greece went to norway and now we're in Australia. Get out there and explore, I guess. And if you don't explore, then you don't find out. So experience these things, smell some things, be cool, be good to everybody, uh, rock on, whatever you want to do. And as always, thanks for watching.